Hello, ICRA 2021. My name is Emmett Wise, and on behalf of my co-authors, Uri Perzik, Christopher Greb, Ivan Petrovich, and Jonathan Kelly, I will be presenting our work on continuous time 3D radar to camera extrinsic calibration. We are with the University of Toronto's STARS lab and the University of Zagreb's Lamor. Safety is a paramount concern for autonomous vehicles operating in human-centric environments. Most autonomous vehicles fuse data from multiple sensors to reduce risks due to the failure of a single sensor or sensing modality. The standard autonomous vehicle sensor suite includes GPS, cameras, and LIDARs. These sensors are used to observe the environment and detect potentially dangerous situations. However, inclement weather such as snow, rain, and fog can corrupt data collected by cameras and LIDARs. An autonomous vehicle may fail to work reliably in these situations. To operate in these conditions, many autonomous vehicle sensor platforms incorporate radar, which are relatively immune to inclement weather. The most common radar is the 2D millimeter wavelength radar. These radars measure a landmark's range, range rate, which is the velocity of the landmark in the radial direction, the radar cross section, which is the measure of the target's reflectivity, and azimuth. It's important to note the 2D radar measurements lack an elevation measurement, which complicates 2D radar use in many sensor fusion algorithms. More recently, low-cost 3D radar sensors have become available. These radars are capable of measuring elevation and are set to displace 2D radars in many applications. If we wish to fuse the radar sensor data with data from another sensor, for example, a camera, then we require knowledge of the transform that projects the radar data into the camera reference frame. However, this transform can change due to user modification or through material fatigue. Consequently, users require a process to estimate this transform in the field. This process is known as extrinsic calibration. However, radar extrinsic calibration is complicated by several phenomena. One common complication is multipath reflection, which introduces outlier measurements. Another complication is the wave-like nature of radar measurements. Using electromagnetic waves to observe the environment leads to uncertainty around the precise reflection locations of the EM wave. This uncertainty causes point-to-point -point residuals to be inaccurate for some targets. To assist with the radar extrinsic calibration process, most algorithms rely on specialized targets that consist of two components. First, a radar trihedral reflector, which creates consistent, high-intensity, point-like radar measurements. Second, a target for the second sensor. This target provides a method for the second sensor to measure the corner of the radar trihedral reflector. For the camera case, this target is an April tag, and the vector from the April tag to the corner is hand-measured before starting the calibration process. While extremely useful, these targets do not occur in the real world and restrict the calibration process to the laboratory setting. Most radar extrinsic calibration algorithms are for 2D radars. In this table, we summarize the constraints of some recent 2D radar extrinsic calibration methods. Homography methods provide an accurate method of calibration, but they assume that the radar measurement is entirely 2D and requires specialized targets. Point-based reprojection methods account for the 3D nature of radar measurements, but require a series of specialized targets. Velocity alignment methods eliminate the need for a target, but require manual measurement of the translation between the two sensors and do not account for the 3D nature of radar measurements. Neural networks have been used to calibrate radars to cameras without specialized targets, but they require manual measurement of the translation between the sensors. This leads to the question, can we leverage the extra information provided by 3D radars to remove the specialized targets from the calibration process? Let's start by investigating what system properties we can measure instantaneously. If we measure three non-coplanar stationary landmarks, then we will measure three range rate vectors. These vectors can be inverted and made relative to the radar body, which can be used to reconstruct the radar velocity vector using either least squares or orthogonal distance regression. As a result, our two measurements for extrinsic calibration are the velocity of the radar in its own reference frame and the pose of the camera relative to some inertial reference frame. Before we can use those measurements for extrinsic calibration, we need to address the fact that the radar and camera are not hardware synchronized. As a result, camera and radar measurements may not occur at the same times along the system trajectory. 
score method, we accounted for this by using a B-spline's state representation. On the right, you can see an example of a translational B-spline where a finite number of control points encode the trajectory for a set amount of time. We chose this state representation because it will enable future temporal misalignment estimation and extension. Having presented our measurements and state representation, it will take a few seconds to review our calibration flow. We wish to estimate the translational control points that encode the translation of the system, the rotation group control group elements that encode the rotation of the system, the translation between the camera and the radar, and the rotation between the camera and the radar. The objective is to minimize the weighted radar velocity residual and the weighted camera pose residual. Having formulated our problem, is it observable? To start, we proved that our calibration method was observable. The observability analysis determined two key excitation requirements. First, the system must experience rotation about two non-parallel vectors. This requirement is well established in the extrinsic calibration literature. To meet the second excitation requirement, the radar must translate about two non-parallel vectors. I'd like to note that these two excitation requirements are not exhaustive. Additional requirements could be generated from our degeneracy analysis presented in our paper. However, we posit, based on our experiments, that these constraints are less likely to occur in practice. Following our observability analysis, we performed synthetic experiments to evaluate the sensitivity of the algorithm with respect to radar and camera measurement noise. The synthetic experiments were particularly important for choosing the radar settings for our real-world experiments. Through our experiments with our real-world radar, we found that increasing the radar velocity accuracy decreased the maximum measurable velocity. As a result, we wanted to measure the maximum measurable velocity while ensuring the, the radar velocity measurements were accurate enough for extrinsic calibration. We simulated our sensor platform following the trajectory shown on the top right. The two bottom right plots show the linear and angular acceleration experienced by the simulated sensor platform. For the entirety of the trajectory, the simulated camera observed a checkerboard of known size. Our plot to the left shows the accuracy of the estimated calibration parameters for varying levels of camera and radar measurement noise. These plots show that the radar noise has a much larger effect on the calibration parameter quality than the camera pixel error does. For our real-world radar settings, we determined the radar velocity uncertainty to be the values on the right. Consequently, we expect our results to perform similarly to the top row of the plot. Now, how did our algorithm perform in the real world? Following our synthetic experiments, we performed a series of real-world experiments. The image on the left shows our experimental apparatus, which contains a Texas Instrument 3D radar and a Point Grey V-Fly camera. Our test environment consists of a checkerboard for camera localization and a set of radar trihedral specialized targets. The trihedral targets enable us to compare our algorithm to a state-of-the-art point-based reprojection method. I would like to emphasize that our algorithm does not make use of these targets. In addition to ensuring a suitable testing environment, we ensured that the system experienced motion that satisfied the excitation requirements highlighted in our degeneracy analysis. We use the reprojection error from the point-based reprojection error method to evaluate the accuracy of our estimated calibration parameters. The reprojection error is evaluated by taking a radar and camera measurement. The camera image is then converted into a measurement of the trihedral reflector using the April tag reference frame and the known vector from the April tag to the trihedral reflector. Finally, the radar measurement is projected into the camera reference frame using the estimated transform. The reprojection error is then the distance between the camera's measurement of the trihedral reflector and the projected radar measurement. On the right is a plot that compares the reprojection error of the initial transform, a comparison methods, and our methods parameters. As you can see, our method greatly improved from the initial values and performed comparably on the tar to the target reliant method. Since the comparison method optimizes the evaluation metric, we do expect the comparison method to slightly outperform ours. In conclusion, we have developed a novel, continuous time 3D radar to camera extrinsic calibration method. This method does not require specialized radar targets and performs comparably to target reliant methods. On potential future extensions of this algorithm, 
could include the use of a point-based reprojection residual. For example, recent work has focused on point-to-surface residuals. A second extension could leverage our continuous time representation to estimate temporal misalignment. My co-authors and I thank you for your attention and hope you enjoyed our, this presentation and our paper.